couple of days ago in Southern California at world famous Venice Beach. Nice day at the beach, thousands of people out, a lot of people in the water, people on the sand, playing games, sunning, the usual. And all of a sudden, clouds moved in from all oh, across the uh, across the channel between Catalina Island and Venice Beach. Dark clouds, the thunder, thunder shower, which just doesn't happen along the ocean in the summer. You just don't hear about it. The ocean is a relatively constant temperature. Uh, thunder showers are usually caused by heat rising off the land, pushing moisture up in the air. It doesn't usually happen over the water, at least not in Southern California. The ocean is, well, it's what, 68, 70 degrees? Not hot enough to push enormous amounts of moisture up in the air to cause a thunder shower. Well, this thunder shower also had lightning, which is doubly bizarre. It struck Catalina Island, injured a man, a golfer, I guess, started a brush fire there, and then moved toward the shore. The people at Venice Beach got no warning. There was no official warning put out. And here comes this thunderstorm, or whatever it was. More lightning. A lightning bolt hit the ground there, or the water. I'm not sure which, but they think people in the water swimming may have died and still looking for bodies. One person was killed, a number of people injured. It was a very bizarre thing. Well, nature's strange and unpredictable, and oh well, no big deal, right? Wrong. Uh, this is a very big deal. Now, before we get into this, I'm going to do uh, one little thing here. First, let me uh, say hello to my friend and colleague, Yochi Shimatsu, who has been with us for three and a half years now. Hi, Yochi. How are you? Well, uh, a little shook up by this, uh, what I call the first shot of the real yeah. radiation disaster from Fukushima reaching yeah. uh, California. At least, That's as exactly as what it is. Northwest, but this is like the opening shot. Of the real uh, disasters. Thing. Yeah, let me let me do this one little thing, and then I'm gonna we're gonna go into this in in, in detail because it's uh, it's very important. And I've got the story up at the very top center column at Rents, and I hope you'll all read it. You're not going to hear this from the government. Uh, you're going to hear it from us. Associated Press did report that marine birds are disappearing in the Pacific Northwest. Well, I can tell you birds everywhere are disappearing in the Pacific Northwest and probably all up and down the West Coast. Significant ecological shift, said AP. Significant ecological shift crashes in many species. Die-offs. Something's happening on a big level, but what is it? is the question posed. The herring problem, if you remember the vast schools of herring, were found two years ago now, and last year, even the same, but worse. Bleeding from eyes, gills, every orifice. Herring is a food fish. It says the herring problem may be far worse than revealed. Result of contamination? Nobody... None of these scientists dare use the R word. They will not say radiation. They won't even say it might be radiation. They are so afraid of their own shadows, it's sickening. There's nothing else that can be causing the enormity of the crisis in the North Pacific except three years plus of deadly, massive injections of waterborne and airborne radioactivity from Fukushima. And I'll leave it to you to read the rest of the story at Rents. Now, back to Southern California, and this is what Yochi calls the opening shot of Fukushima radiation along the West Coast. And I think, as usual, and he was the first to nail the bomb which blew... MH17 out of the sky over the proper location. MH17 shouldn't have been flying where it was. The Polish air traffic controllers rerouted it 
to fly over the place where it was blown up. Can you spell conspiracy? You don't even have to. You can just say it. Anyway, Yochi was the first to, uh, to put the bomb hypothesis, which makes absolute sense out there, and it went off the same day that the Zionists invaded and began to run their final genocide on the Palestinians. Perfect diversion. Same people behind both events. And anyway, here we are. All right, my friend. Why the first shot? You, I, I understand, but let's tell when, our listeners. When I say that is because this is the really great radiation pulse in the water, you know, but that's been anticipated. And it's been here. As I told you a couple of weeks ago, you can see a line of dark clouds, straight line, behind Catalina Island. This is where the California current, which brings the radiation from the North Pacific current, you know, from Fukushima, down the West Coast, and it curves around Catalina Island because there's a Channel Island and there's a shelf out there. So it yeah. curves around, okay? Yeah. And you can see a line of clouds that is perfectly flat, Always there, never going away. Really? Dark gray. Yeah. Now, it's I lived... Like, it's I, identical I, to Fukushima. Identical. I, I lived on, uh, in Santa Barbara, in Isla Vista, yeah. right on the cliff yeah. for nine yeah. years. All and right. I'm well acquainted with looking out past Santa Cruz Island and Acapa yeah. Island, clear as a bell. Yeah. This is a permanent cloud line, exactly like Fukushima, and eerily flat. You know, it's... Straight across, like a uh, like someone's using a smudge, you know, like a charcoal stick of charcoal, you know, art, artist charcoal, and drawing it across uh-huh. the hands. But it's like that. This is exactly what you see outside of Fukushima all the time now. You know, in the Japan Trench, we're seeing this and the equivalent of that. This is with a California current coming down, and it tends to slow down around the uh, Channel Islands because it's turning. Okay, it goes through several channels. And it's always there. San Clemente Island, which is a naval, a military control island used for bombing runs, that's ob- obscured most of the time. Now, sometimes you can see another time this uh, straight line cloud just flows right across it and over it. This is exactly the area where the clouds that came up to uh, Venice Beach northward uh, went northward and uh, unloosed the lightning. So I think it's unmistakable. This is a very much characteristic of a radioactive cloud that moves. Um, basically, what you have is uh, you have a normal cloud. that You have a cloud there, basically uh, water, which has been heated by radionucleotides, forming this cloud. So it's very even. And surrounding it, what you can't see is sort of a mantle of radioactive uh, isotopes all around that. And what we can see happen in, in Venice Beach, we're talking about at least three strikes, major strikes, in Catalina Island, four of them at least in Venice Beach, uh, a house and a car, so two strikes in Redondo Beach, okay? So a number of strikes occurred in, in series that basically the protons from Fukushima are being sucked in with the cloud as hot air rises in the deserts of California and pulls it in. So... Between the two channel islands, you know, you have, well, what you talk about up there uh, off of Santa Barbara, there's a set of islands there, the Channel Island National Park. Then you have the Catalina Group south of that. Yeah. Uh, And so basically this cloud was sucked in toward the Los Angeles area and went straight up there and unloosed. And when these protons, what happens is when the uh, hot air uh, rises over the desert, it sucks up air from the ocean. And the air that travels across the waves and across the shore and the ground basically strips away electrons from the water in the ground. And so you have this huge amount of free electrons, uh, which are a negative charge. The protons are a positive charge. When that cloud came in from uh, uh, Catalina Island, boom, you know, wham. And, you know, the chances of being, being struck by lightning in California are 1 in 75 million. It's one of the lowest lightning places in, in, in the United States. Okay. 1 in 75 million. We saw what? We saw about uh, 9 strikes uh, yesterday. Now, you, this is not what we would see uh, in the summertime as uh, a, inland. It never happened before. 
Right. It's, it's so yeah. rare. There's nothing on record of this of this nature. Yeah. That's how rare it is. If it ever happened, no one bothered to record it. This is not a freak of nature. This is man-made. Okay. The other thing that I know, why uh, I confirm that it's not man-made, last night, the, you know, just 12 hours after this uh, event at Venice uh, Beach, it rained heavily on the California coast. In fact, it was the heaviest rainstorm uh, ever in the month of July. It rained more in one night in, in, in an hour than it has in 10 July. You know, 10 July, we're talking about more than 300 days. Got it it. rained more in a less than a one hour period along the coast. That very unusual rain. So the first thing I did, jumped on a bicycle. Here I am, once again, the guy with a bicycle, not with a car, <laughs> not with a limo, not with a pickup truck, <laughs> but with a bicycle. Back in Fukushima. God bless uh, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Fukushima, California. Here I am. You know, I came here to take a break from it, to rehabilitate, to get my breath and what happens. And I was really depressed after hearing the news of Venice because I knew, and it's here. You know, it's followed me. I, you know, I came here for a break, and now i got to face it, and I'm going to have to ride a bicycle, which I did this morning. I went down to a, a, a coastal a marine park. Uh, south you took, of took your Geiger counter with you. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, it was my, uh, what do you call it, dosimeter, took it, mm-hmm. took it down there, mm-hmm. um, and lo and behold, you know, I checked a couple houses, you know, the roofs, there was, like, on the edge of the roof, something that, uh, let's say it was 12 microceivers on the ground below the roof, but on the roof itself, 20, so we're talking about more than half a jump, so we, we there was a massive amount of radiation that came down last night over the whole shoreline. Now, you're talking... California. Okay, let me get this straight. 0.12 yeah, micro Yes, yeah, that's right. micro on the ground, that's but right. 0.20 on the roof from, on the, from, roof, from, which from the precipitation. That, yeah. From that night, yeah. Uh, so basically, we're talking about a 0.08 difference, quite a bit, possibly more, okay? Well, then I go down mm-hmm. to the PCH, the uh, Pacific Coast Highway, Right below there in the channels where the rain comes off the highway, uh, 0.20 again. Along the plateau toward the sea, 0.16. But at the bottom of the bluff, okay, where the earth meets the beach, uh, I found it was something like 0.28, okay, build up. But in the kelp down there, very old dry kelp that gets blown up, okay, maybe several years old, very absorbent, 0.28. Thirty-eight yeah, micro this is like Fukushima levels in that yeah. That's a yeah. that's that's a that's as high as Fukushima, isn't it? As high as Fukushima. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There at the bottom of the uh, uh, just that one spot. You go down the beach. The numbers go down in the kelp. Basically, in the drier kelp, it's higher because it's exposed, absorbs rainwater. Okay, it's been there longer. Yeah. Go down toward the beach uh, near the water's edge. It's low because you have relatively still wet kelp. It hasn't absorbed much rainwater yet. Okay, down to about 14. Okay. Uh-huh. Then the surprise was the kelp, fresh kelp. We're talking about young kelp in the water. That was like 0.28. Okay. So uh, we're talking this, about this, this is, is not, not affected this, by rainwater. No, this is no, fresh no. in seawater. This yeah. been, in other words, That's the bloom the and radiation yeah. has hit California. Uh, is the kelp, the young kelp that's growing this year, this this, this this winter, since last spring, that's been really growing fast, is absorbing a lot of radioactive compounds. So the water is, in fact, very, very radioactive now. So we know very clearly uh. from everything that the, the water, the bioaccumulation just this year has been massive, okay, compared to the past, that there's massive amounts coming in in the fog, as we and, and in the rainwater, as we see at the bottom of the bluff there, okay, yeah, yeah. and as uh, and as we saw in Venice, these massive unaccounted for lightning strikes. And I've always thought said that Fukushima radiation has been altering the weather, creating all this freak weather. If I if these lightning strikes weren't freak weather, I don't know what is. You know, these are both out of the blue, in which in a place where lightning never strikes. And everyone on the beach felt it, apparently. You know, people were just feeling tingling sensations all over the body. About more than a dozen people were hit 
uh, where they had to be hospitalized. But everyone apparently on the beach, fishermen, everyone, everyone that was there could feel the light. They thought they would see a flash, they could feel the tingling sensation, and then they would see people falling down. That's uh, that's that's an extraordinary report. I read it. That is not normal lightning. That's it's extremely broad in its impact. Mm-hmm. Uh, not localized. I, this is over a massive area. It's a, long, it's a big beach, and it went down to Redondo Beach, which is to the yeah. southwest. It's quite a distance. Okay, yeah, so we're yeah. talking about three separate places, very far away, and uh, with multiple strikes in each one. This is not normal lightning. Wow. All right. Well, yeah, so the North is, Pacific is, Current, remember, comes across uh, from from Fukushima off uh, Honshu, yeah. and uh, yeah. it uh, it's called the North Pacific Current, and it moves straight across, basically, 10 knots an hour. It uh, divides approximately Washington State, north of Washington State, north end of Washington State, approximately, let's just say for the sake of discussion, half goes on up to Alaska yeah. along the coach the coast and spins round and around in the Gulf of Alaska like a toilet that's been flushed where there's nowhere to go. And it just concentrates and concentrates. The other half comes down south, right down the Pacific coast all the way, and it's washed onto the shore in the waves. It's brought into the shore with the moisture, the marine layer. Any precipitation that forms clouds or fog, that'll bring it in. It migrates through a number of different passes uh, for it to go. 